Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. In our last video, we did some work with a hamstick as a ground-mounted vertical antenna. The last one worked out great. I can only imagine this one's gonna work out two times better. Let's prove it. If for no other reason than this seems to make logical sense, I'm gonna measure out this one here before I make any changes, just in case there are any differences between having them this way. I need to go from tent stake mount over to pole mount. So I need my 11 millimeter wrench for the nuts and my 10 millimeter socket for the bolts. No more tent spike. Now we need to get this onto a pole. And what I'm going to use is the buddy pole tripod and mast. This is from buddy pole, but it's also for the original buddy pole antenna. And I'm gonna clamp it right onto the top of the mast here. I need to take this plate and rotate it so that that groove goes up and down, which would allow one of the dipoles to go out that way and the other one to go out that way. But I turned the whole thing around, so they're not both going in the same direction. I can't fool you guys like that. Hey, I didn't lose any nuts putting that thing on. This is probably an aluminum mast and this is a chrome or steel or chrome steel, chromoly steel, I don't know. It's, it's very strong, this mount. And so I just kind of used my ratchet as if it was a torque wrench. And I did that one little click, which was my ratchet ratcheting backwards in the opposite direction, just to let me know that I've got it snug and that is strong enough. When you put your antenna on a mount like this, you wanna make sure that one side is the shield of your coax and the other side is the center conductor of your coax. So check that out with your multimeter. Make sure that you've got continuity or don't have continuity as you see fit. We'll let the racing lawnmowers go by. First place. And bring it up the rear. When you're working with these 3S24 mounts, you will see these little white washers here. Maybe it's black, maybe it's white, maybe it's something, who knows. But what you wanna do is use that washer to make sure that you've isolated center pin from shield so that you have a left side and a right side of your dipole. Otherwise, it's just one big piece of metal in the air, which will work, but not as good as what we're trying to do today. So I pulled out the second hamstick, and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make the assumption that they both need to start off at the exact same length, and that that's probably a pretty good starting point. What's going to happen is you're going to find your SWR down here where you're adjusting. Make sure it's a little bit higher because as you raise the antenna up higher into the air, your SWR is gonna get lower as it gets farther away from the ground. And that's a good thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that these two line up and are the exact same size as each other. And then I'm gonna try and keep them the same size throughout the whole range of adjustments. So that side went in all the way, and there's a good view of that white washer that I was talking about earlier. This side here, this hexagonal portion, rubs up against the clamp mount there for some reason, and I think that this bolt is what is preventing that from seating all the way. Realistically, that shouldn't make any difference. Maybe I'll have to shorten this one antenna a skosh. We'll see. And then I'm gonna go ahead and leave my radial connectors connected. It might affect things a little bit, but we will account for that. So any good scientific process starts with an assumption and then you work your way forward or backwards from the assumption to come up with the reality. In this case, I couldn't be happier with the reality. My assumption was that I need to make both ends of the dipole the exact same length as the horizontal ground plane that I had set up before. I did that on the Nano VNA. It has an amazing SWR. 14074 is where I'm gonna run this thing for FTA today. So we have a comparison to what we did in the other video, which is linked up here and the SWR is 1.1 here, this high off the ground. I'm, I'm six foot, so this is six foot plus. And I'm gonna raise it up even farther because I can. Let's go do that. The SWR scan on the 705. Not bad at all. So another hypothesis I had, I didn't wanna say this in the last video because I wasn't 100% sure. And I'm still not really 100% sure. So if you guys know, Leave a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. But what I have is mountain on this side. And hot damn if there ain't a big old dam over there. So I've got that. That is east, which makes that 
north and I am in south central Kentucky right now. And my thoughts are that the vertical antenna has a better takeoff angle for this kind of terrain, topology, whatever you want to call it. I have no idea. It's just a thought. And so far it's proven out to be accurate. I am not getting heard very much outside of the US with this antenna, whereas with the vertical, I was heard over in the UK in the last video. Anecdotal at best, hopefully you guys have some more info for me. So I think this was a pretty good setup. There definitely is some action going on. It could be because this antenna was about 10 feet off the ground. I'm not 100% sure. It's another tool to have in your arsenal. It's another, it's another weapon to have in your quiver, another ham stick to have at the ready to go. It was a fun experiment and fairly easy to deploy. If you already have the hamsticks, this would be great. So there are also a variety of different ways you can get this dipole up in the air. You do not need to use the buddy pole, tripod, and mast system. You can use any tripod and mast system. You can use no tripod, but you probably need some kind of pole of some kind. One of the really popular options out there is to use some chain link top rail fence. And another thing I could see that might work out well for this would be the roof mount tripod for old school TV Yagi's. So I will leave some links for those kind of things in the description down below. Probably be able to find those at one of your local big box stores. These things are fantastic. They are easy to tune. If you didn't see the tune up procedure, I did go over it a little bit more in the part one video. And in this one here, all I did was make both sides the same length and put it together. And it was already at one to one because I did all the work in the previous video, which is another reason why I wanted to do it here. It was also an interesting comparison to have the previous video's results of getting farther out than to have this video's results of being more stateside, if you will. There will be links down below in the description for more information about these hamsticks and about the tripod and the pole and so on and so on. Ham radio is always fun. You never know what you're going to get, but you're always going to get something. There's a video right up here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.